An Ohio Haunt. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. Franklin and Vine Street in the southwest area of Cleveland is a four-bedroom limestone-looking house shrouded in trees, historic yet nondescript from the vantage point of the sidewalk. But to Ohioans, it's a terrifying haunted house. But even more than that, the house has ties to Nazism, communism, Yahoo.com, arson, online hoaxes, and Judy Garland. Today, we're covering the Franklin Castle, the Tideman residence, or what many refer to as, quote, the most haunted house in Ohio. The Tideman House, a high Victorian eclectic style stone house, has been on Cleveland's west side for over 125 years, but its haunting started before the first person ever moved in. It was built in the years 1881, 1882, and 1883 by Hans Tideman, a German immigrant who found his fortune first as a grocer and then as a banker. He wanted the best, so he hired the best, commissioning the most famous and successful architectural firm of Cadell and Richardson to create a house on one of, if not the, wealthiest streets in the city, Franklin Boulevard. Hence, Franklin House. You get it. Tideman wanted his home to be a safe haven for German immigrants, impressing on them the opportunities he had earned in America, so it had to be grand. The house that was currently in the lot just would not do. Who knows what memories Tideman destroyed when he raised the initial house? We will never know. But in any case, the Tideman house would replace an earlier house on the property, out with the old, in with the new. But I digress. The hauntings, the ones I teased, happened before the Tidemans even moved in. I shouldn't say hauntings at first. Before ghosts came the deaths, two close and painful ones that the Tideman family experienced. On January 15, 1881, Tideman's 15-year-old daughter Emma got diabetes and died. Not long after, Hans Tideman's elderly mother, Wybecca, also passed away. During the next three years, the Tidemans would bury three more of their young children, giving rise to speculation that the house brought a bad energy, a curse even. But to distract his wife Louise from these painful losses, Tideman decided to make the house even grander, adding a ballroom which ran the length of the house on the fourth floor. Also, Tideman decided to add turrets and gargoyles to the building's facade, a creepy castle vibe, and a castle label to match, Franklin Castle. In any case, Hans and his wife Louise and their two surviving children, August and Dora, moved into Franklin Castle in 1883. Things seemed to be going okay. Their children grew up, were healthy. In fact, both children gave Hans and Louise six grandkids, all boys. Rumors, however, of sexual indiscretions and murder by Tideman circulated at the time, but nobody could prove anything. And certainly no investigations happened after Louise Tideman, the Franklin House matriarch, died from liver disease on March 24, 1895, at the age of 57. After that, things calmed down a bit, but the next year, Hans Tideman sold the house to the Mulhazer family and decided to move on to the next chapter of his life. But... By 1908, all the Tidemans die. Remaining kids Dora and August both die in 1906, and Hans goes in 1908. According to GhostWalks.com, a write-up of the time said, quote, On a sunny Wednesday, January 22nd of 1908, he took a walk in the park and dropped dead on the path from a massive stroke. So again, by 1908, all the nuclear Tideman family are dead, leaving no immediate family member to inherit the Tideman fortune. So then we move on to the Mulheiser family. The Mulheiser family was now living in the Franklin Castle and did so until Prohibition era, seemingly without any issue. After the Mulheisers, Franklin Castle transitions into a kind of German cultural center. From 1921 to 1968, the house was known as Eintracht Hall and housed all German clubs, meetings, singing lessons, political discussions. Even Nazis were rumored to be there, hiding out during World War II. It's said that Nazis were found by authorities within the house, and 20 of them were executed in the house's own basement. But this was later proven very false. Nazi spies did not live in the house. However, I understand why the connection was made. Anti-fascist German communists used the castle's turret to broadcast a shortwave radio show to other Germans of similar ideologies, which I'm sure seems suspect to their mild-mannered Ohioan neighbors. 
Also at the time, the house held the largest German socialist library in the United States. Then there's a rumor that feels a bit more believable, a bit less sensationalized than Nazis living in Ohio. I'm sure you noted the year that this became a German communal space, 1921. Franklin Castle, now Eintracht Hall, had other non-Nazi related rumors that it had hidden rooms and passageways used for bootlegging. None of these rooms or passageways exist today, if they did at all, unless, well, we'll get there. But there was one small stairway used by servants that led from the kitchen to the front door of the house. In January 1968, James Romano, his wife and six children, bought and lived in Franklin Castle. They were no drama people and had ambitions of turning the house into a restaurant. But the house seemed to have other plans. One day, the Romano kids came down from their rooms to ask their parents for cookies. They said, quote, and give us an extra one for the sad girl upstairs. Mrs. Romano was confused and went upstairs to see this quote unquote sad girl. She saw none, but this girl is believed to be the first sighting of the ghost of Emma, the Tideman daughter who died from diabetes. At that point, the Romanos started seeing lots of things, apparitions, dark figures, even a woman wearing a long black dress. The Romano family reported so many encounters with ghosts in their new home, they even attempted exorcisms and cleansings with the now-defunct ghost hunting group, the Northeast Ohio Psychical Research Society. Now, I shouldn't say defunct, because when you research Northeast Ohio Psychical Research Society, you get the Northeast Ohio Paranormal Association, a Facebook group with over 3,000 followers. Clearly, ghost hunting is alive and well in Ohio. And of course, I need to hear more about it. But not right now, because now we break. Hi, hello, how are you? Hello. How are you doing? How's it going? Oh, pretty good, thanks. Mm-hmm. I'm not asking you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought maybe you know. one time No. I would get to... Nah. No? Mm-mm. It's just, it's just, it's for them. It's for them. Everything's for them. It's you should know that you. by now. It's all for you. It's all for you, baby. What is that, from the omen? Is it from the, it's all for you, uh... Janet Jackson? Damien... <laughs> In the movie The Omen? <laughs> yeah. You've seen The Omen, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all for you, Damien. Oh. Uh, his n- nanny, I guess. Oh. It's been a while since I've seen same, it. Same, same, clearly. You know, The Omen, it wasn't like good omens, right? It wasn't just like- It wasn't like well wishes? Uh, oh, <laughs> that lottery ticket's going to be a $10 winner. Oh, shit, yeah, shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. Got that parking spot. Uh, hey. No different no? omen. Okay. Well, fair. We want to say hello to anyone who's listening. Supporting us, spreading the good word. We appreciate yes, it. Thank you so, so, so much. Telling everybody about Ghost Town. Tell them, spread the word. You know what? You're like, what do you say on a first date? <laughs> no, what do you say on a first contact before a first date? Oh, yeah, yeah. Has anyone tried bringing Ghost Town into it? <laughs> and if not, no one has had success by not trying it, so <laughs> you don't know if that's the thing that's going to lead to true love. Yeah, that's true. That's whatever true. you want. You want that's marriage. True. You just want a companion. You mm-hmm. just want, you know, you just whatever. want just whatever. Look, uh, it's like whatever. You just want a whatever. Whatever you want. Whatever. I mean, just put it in your put it in your bio. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be an, an app. It could just be your social media or just have it on a shirt. Yeah. I don't know how you tat. introduce yourself. But that's not for me to know. That's but your business. Tat it up. <laughs> First tattoo, first ghost town tattoo that's not on one of us. What do they? What should they get? They should get like a lifetime Patreon membership. It's the worst idea. Oh, I'm so sorry, everyone. That's not incentivizing anybody. We know who is branded for life, one way or another, whether they like it or not, is our mm-hmm. government. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Can't do it without them. Mm-mm. They they have the mark. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> they're right. under the they're under the dark That's black right. sign. They they woke up and they looked at their arm and they were like, "Oh shit, I'm in the government." <laughs> we have the mayors. This mayor had an omen that there was going to be a big old bogo sale <laughs> at at their favorite store. <laughs> Whatever that is, a sweet bogo. I don't want to say what the store is. DSW. <laughs> Maybe. Where, where, whoever, who has bogos? A nice buy one, get one. They're just like, whoa, I feel like there's going to be a sweet bogo nice. here. Nice. That would be Kelly Meehan. Hello. Somebody had an omen that somebody that they wished ill will, nothing really, really bad. Mm. And they wished it kind of passively mm. when, you know, they saw him online. They were like, Ugh. like I hope I hope your fun day gets rained out. It did get rained oh, out. Shit. It did come true. Whoa. I don't know how they're gonna live with themselves. Powerful. That's but they powerful. probably will. 
That's Kat Joselle. Hello. This mayor had an omen that the world was ending because they couldn't find the remote control Mm-mm. for their TV. Found it. Oh, nice. Charlie Gilbert. Hello. This mayor had an omen and the sound was coming from <laughs> inside the house. The sound of- it was just their phone because they used the um, find my phone <laughs> things. They couldn't find it. Another lost. It's like, ooh, ooh, nice. It's Ashley Matson. Hello. This mayor had an omen that their name was going to be mentioned right now. <laughs> Casey Weber. Hello. And our governor. The ominist of them all. <laughs> did not make a deal with the devil. The devil made a deal with her. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And you know what? Good for the devil. Yeah. It was a good deal. It was a good, fair, <laughs> equitable good. deal. You know, good. everyone ag- came upon an agreement. They're like, listen, it could be a handshake deal. Sure. Sure. Right? sure. But we'll let's put this in writing. For the fun of it. Yeah. Make sure cover our bases. Trust you, of course, but just cut. They just use legal zoom or whatever it is. They <laughs> just printed good. out some things. That's they didn't want to get they didn't want to get uh, either a devil lawyer involved <laughs> or a governor um lawyer involved yeah no you don't want you just who has the time between two friends yeah just do it up that'd be our governor avian, avian noble. noble if you want no ads no chit chat bonus episodes just the good stuff seven days free try it out mm. you know you want to just binge a bunch of episodes with no ads and talking and yapping and this this, this, kind of... this exactly this do you want to listen to us lose our minds for the last five <laughs> years the the spiral you don't you don't well you this don't. is it and if you want to just get there's got to be like 70 something bonus episodes there's you want a lot to of bonus you can there. burn through them and then you can bail you can just be like i don't want to support you burn and further. bail the ghost yeah. town way or or just support us a little more it's yeah, up to you that's good we do we do good work here well yeah. good negotiable work and, but we do some work and here what's the word work even mean yeah uh, head on over to patreon.com slash ghost town pod Right. While you're heading over there, let's head back to Ohio. By 1974, the Romanos decided to leave the house, Franklin Castle, on a recommendation by a local priest. So they did. The next owner was a man by the name of Sam Muscatello, who planned to turn the castle into a church. Strangely, to raise money for that church, Muscatello held haunted house tours and overnight stays. That is, until 1975, when human bones were found in one of the castle's many closets. Some believe Muscatello planted the bones looking to gain publicity. Others, not so much. In 1982, the location was added to the National Register of Historic Places, and in 1984, Muscatello sold the castle to Michael DeVinco, who already had his own claim to fame as Judy Garland's fifth and last husband. Davinko was a performer himself. Twelve years Garland's junior, Davinko married Garland in March of 1969, and nobody was into it. Garland had been having a rough time with her mental health and had substance abuse issues, and Davinko wasn't exactly beloved by the entertainment community. Hundreds were invited to see the 47-year-old Judy Garland's fifth marriage to 35-year-old Davinko, but only 50 people showed up. Even Garland's daughter, Liza Minnelli, declined the invite to her mother's wedding, saying, quote, I can't make it, Mama, but I promise I'll come to the next one. Production assistant Rosalind Wilder, however, did attend the wedding. She was a friend of Garland's and was, as one might be, somewhat protective of Garland. When Wilder was asked to describe her friend's new husband, she said, quote, A dreadful man. I mean, if she put an advert in the newspaper for the most unsuitable person to take care of her, she would not have had a better response. I don't know what possessed, well, I know what possessed her because he gave in to her and fed her all the things she wanted. Not a very glowing review. But on June 22, 1969, only three months after marrying Devenko, Judy Garland was found dead in her London home. After Garland's body had been embalmed and clothed in the same gray silk dress from her wedding to Devenko, Devenko traveled with her remains to New York City, had the funeral, and then went to Ohio, where he bought Franklin Castle. He then spent close to $1 million renovating it. Not in a bad way, but in my research, a great way. He wanted the place to look like it did back in the late 1800s. Davinko even tracked down some of the original furnishings for the castle. But despite all of his work, Davinko put the house up for sale in 1994, owning it for only 10 years. The castle was empty from 1994 until 1999, when native Clevelander Michelle Heimberger, an early employee of Yahoo, bought the castle and carriage house using part of her very valuable Yahoo stock. She had plans on restoring more of the house, but in 1998, the house was torched by an arsonist, causing substantial damage to it. 
In 2004, there were rumors that Franklin Castle was going to be completely renovated and turned into some kind of members-only club, as evidenced by Franklin Castle Club promotional websites, glossy photos, and business plan. But the whole thing was a hoax. No repairs had even been made, and the pictures on the website were all either close-up shots of individual points of architecture or pictures stolen from other online resources. But while the house wasn't hosting any club members there was evidence to show that it had been used to shoot local pornography. The property was damaged again in March 2011, when there was yet another fire. European tapestry artist Chiara Donna Dalle purchased Franklin Castle later that year and did some more restoration. Now the house is used as a bed and breakfast and kind of community space, again. Rates range from $175 per person to $245 per person. But what can you expect haunting-wise, along with the strangest, most all-over-the-place history of Franklin Castle? Oh, you can expect a lot. Normal haunted stuff like flickering lights and slamming doors, but also the little girl as seen by the Romanos, often heard crying. And then there's the most famous ghost, quote, the woman in black, and how she manifests with guests at the castle. Not connected to any known history, it's said that her name is Rachel, and she was the family's maid. Rachel apparently was always harassed by Hans Tiedemann, and as the story of the woman in black goes, Hans was a philanderer, always cheating on Louise, maybe even having a secret child somewhere by another mistress. In any case, Rachel was not having any part of it, and turned Hans' advances down over and over, making him very angry. This all led to a confrontation in the tower room, the room in the house's legendary turret. The legend goes on to say that Hans Tiedemann snuck up behind Rachel wrapped his hands around her throat, and strangled her to death. That's why guests who go up to the turret often have the sensation of not being able to breathe, of being choked. Here are some testimonials from people on Reddit who have been inside, at least. At most have a long history experiencing the house as neighbors, friends, etc. From Stockfig6180, My mom's friend lived there from 1985 till 1989, before it was updated. All the passages and false doors were so fun when I was eight not scary at all. From Begonia 824, my friend used to work at Ford with a former owner. According to this person, the man's daughter used to play with the ghost of a little girl. Take that for what you will. Says my cat can't cat. Spent a lot of time there. I'm close to the woman who owned it when the fire occurred. Actually, I'm the idiot who told her it was for sale since I lived a few houses away at the time. Haunted? I don't know. Not much of a believer in ghosts, but there was one room that was off. Creepy? Yeah. A lot of Mickey DeVanco's decor was on the creepy side. I'm talking a fully mirrored shower with seating and hot tub room with peepholes and a secret door. We used so much bleach. From Lake Lover, there's a book that's pretty comprehensive and puts to rest old rumors. The house is most definitely haunted. I've spent time there. While deaths did happen on the property, no murders or such took place there. But the house itself feels alive. A range of experiences, just like the house's own history a history I'd be happy to spend a couple hundred dollars to investigate and feel firsthand. Though out of respect and safety, I'll probably skip the turret and the closets. For America's climate goals, investing in clean energy adds up. But what doesn't add up is an additionality requirement for clean hydrogen. Additionality would put an unnecessary and inequitable burden on domestic clean hydrogen producers and have serious consequences for America. America needs clean hydrogen, but an additionality requirement just doesn't add up. Get the facts at cleanhydrogentoday.org. Paid for by the Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Energy Association.